first of all, I want to acknowledge the fact that these are record results. Record sales, record EBITDA, very strong cash flow, record earnings per share, record returns on capital. So it really is firing on all cylinders. But we have to keep the momentum going. One thing I want to highlight is achieving those results was despite very strong cost inflation headwinds. We overcame 369 million cost inflation headwinds with 475 million of pricing. Never been seen before. So really proud. But to your point, we are very attentive to the macro uncertainties. We've got the breadth of portfolio, the strength to overcome. But we have to really make sure that every day we go there and we really overcome with our eyes open. Karim, uh, let me just ask you about Russia and, uh, and we, we can deal with this and, and move on. Um, suspending the operations, I think that announcement was made uh, some wee while ago, back on the, uh, the 7th of uh, April here. But you've continued to pay your employees there, uh, 26 employees, they continue to get um, compensation and benefits during the suspension. What next? for this business, given that we still are very much in the uh, unpleasantness of the Russian invasion into Ukraine? No, I can only agree. And unpleasantness, you know, we're horrified at a human level of what's, to ha what's happening in that region. To your point, we've suspended all our direct operations. We didn't hesitate. We were one of the first companies to do that. But at the same time, we don't want to hurt people. We care about people. So we told all our employees that not to worry we would pay them, we would maintain their salaries. And that to me is one reason that I'm really proud of what we've done. We're doing the right thing. And of course, we're complying with all legal and regulatory expectations. That goes without saying really in these situations. Um, I hate to, to sort of make this geopolitically focused, but can I move you on to China as well, where you do have uh, business? What impact from the ongoing lockdowns there surrounding zero COVID? Well, look, we're into the fourth, fifth week of Shandong, predominantly in Shanghai. We have 500 people in Shanghai. Um, the first thing we did, talking about impact, is the human impact. A lot of people were impacted by lack of food. So we mobilized and we've helped more than 360 out of our 500 employees, that's 70%, by supplementing their diet with food parcels. I'm very proud of that. From a business standpoint, we had very modest impact in the first quarter. In the second quarter, we estimate it'll be about 50 million euros of lost sales at this point, predominantly because of the congestion and the bottlenecks in the ports around that region. So relatively modest for Solvay. Some of it may come back in the third quarter, but in the scheme of things, it's very much part of what we've anticipated. Is, you know, when we actually upgraded our forecast for the full year, modestly from mid single digit to mid to high single digits, we factored that in at this point in time. Karim, um, Jeff was talking um, to our previous guests about um, green initiatives as well. I've got to be honest with you, for you to reach carbon neutrality by 2050, by zero, it doesn't seem that imaginative. Could you not move a lot quicker? Because a lot of the countries are going to try and move quicker. A lot of companies are trying to move quicker. I agree. I think 2050 is not enough. I mean, the vast majority of our businesses, in fact, all of Solvay's businesses will be there by 2040. So we've shaved 10 years off of that. The one business that we simply cannot get there early enough is a soda ash, but we will get there by 2050. The majority will be done by uh, 2040, even for that business. So to your point, completely agree. Solvay will be there as one of the first early strong movers in that direction. There's no other way to run the business these days. We're part of what we're doing there. And maybe just add one other thing is, Carbon neutrality doesn't necessarily hurt the bottom line. We will be deploying over a billion euros of capital to make that transition, and it will create shareholder value. So economically, it doesn't create much of a dilemma for me as a CFO. And again, where there's a will, there's a way, and we will get there. Sorry, why are processes for um, sodium carbonate, soda uh, ash, why are these so... Uh backward looking when it comes to the process and its, its carbon impact. Why can't we move forward? Is technology just not moving quickly enough or is it just a dirty process that we can't do anything about? I think it's a really important question. I think the process itself is being optimized and there's always more we can do. And count on us, we will continue to innovate. We want to innovate and invent the Solvay 2.0 uh, soda ash process. That takes time, but we're very much on the case. 
The other thing I will highlight, though, is a very significant part of our Sorash business is Strona-based. It's natural. It has a completely different CO2 footprint. And again, that's something that's very, very important to recognize. What I will say is what's really important in situations like this is don't just look at the absolute level, but look at the rate of improvement. And I would invite anybody to highlight any company that's improving at a faster rate than we are. We're putting a lot of effort, a lot of resources to driving that agenda very hard. And Karin, just to wrap up from me, um, what visibility do you think you have on energy costs for the rest of this year? We, we talked to the CEO of BP yesterday. Unsurprisingly, he thinks that the price of oil is going to remain high for the rest of the year. But how are you managing that additional charge on the business? And what's your visibility like? My visibility is essentially as, as good as anybody else's. What I can tell you is we're not expecting, we're certainly not banking on any easing of, uh, of costs. We're not also saying it's going to double or triple. We're not speculating. What we are saying is no matter what, we will overcome. And we're looking to mitigate. We're looking to make sure we work with our customers to really offer them very critical, valuable solutions that enable us to pass pricing up. That's one of the reasons, one of the real highlights of the quarter is 20% increase in pricing. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersecchi and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.